Hello again, I'm Grant Hebbett and you're watching Gabbett Media. And today we're looking at Sculpt January number 11 and the topic was liquid. Uh, so hopefully you can see it on the screen now. I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. It was good fun. It took about four hours, well, at four hours recording time, a little bit under in terms of recording time, but there's always a fair bit of uh, things around that uh, research and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so a good five hours probably in total on this one and lots of messing around in EV as per usual. Um, it took me ages to realize uh, that I had the background set to transparent because I like to have that rotation. Uh, and of course, Bloom isn't going to work with a transparent background very well anyway, unless you did it on some sort of uh, compositing. Uh, but I didn't really want to get into compositing because that I'm not particularly great at it for a start. And uh, it's just lots of looking up stuff, especially with EV and how you composite with EV. Didn't really want to go there. Anyway, so I started off with the skin modifier on the character. I thought, do I just import some characters because the liquid is the most important bit and uh, that's what I should be sculpting. And then I thought, nope, I need to practice my characters and especially female characters uh, are just not very good. I've got my anatomy model and it's a man. Uh, so I need to practice females. Uh, so if anybody wants to send me uh, a female one, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, I did actually use my pose models, as you can see here. And I'm going off them slightly, actually, because I found them a little bit awkward to get into that position that I wanted to see. So um, I was sort of posing them around, pulling them around, and they didn't quite go to the lengths that I wanted them to go to. So although maybe i don't know are they a good buy are they not uh i suppose you decide in terms of they don't go to all the poses you want because they can't go to those extremities and uh, that really is quite a big limitation really but i, don't, I suppose you're not going to get anything that uh, goes to extreme um, poses maybe there's something out there uh, and i'll contact them and try and get them to send me something in the future anyway back to the modeling uh, I spent a good hour, I think it was, on uh, the female model. Uh, again, I wanted to practice my anatomy, so um, I wanted to uh, get used to that, spend some time on it, a uh, lot of time on the base mesh, and I didn't go particularly high poly. I had my constant detail set to somewhere around, well, eight at the moment, and I put it up to 10 uh, a bit later on. Uh, and all the time I was doing it, I was thinking, oh no, I'm gonna to have to post this, and it looks awful. Uh, and slowly, 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 it became okay. Uh, and that was mainly when I started looking closer at my references. Uh, so uh, let that be a lesson to you. Look at your references and get references always. Uh, it's a funny one really, because I was thinking about liquid and I was spending so long uh, finding reference images of liquid because I wanted it splashing against something uh, and that took quite a while to find. Uh, so all my reference images uh, were of liquid rather than people. Uh, so I didn't have anything set up. So I just quickly uh, looked at a female, um, of, you know, uh, character turnarounds. That's what I like to look at. Because then you get it from uh, different angles and lots of different characters as well. Uh, so uh, I was able to uh, get a few references like that and slowly but surely it came uh, about that it was okay. <laughs> um, yes, I never went very high detail, like I said, uh, but I didn't want to spend too long on the models, and I thought maybe sort of abstract uh, Tron style models in some way uh, would be okay. Uh, and it was more about the pose that was important to me. And I'm having lots of fun this year with poses. Uh, the last year I just put the models in a T-pose and this year I've been sort of rigging them and putting them into position and things. So I'm uh, quite pleased with how that's going and learning a lot with that. Someone asked me a little while ago if I could do anime characters and I thought, well, I'll make this a bit of an anime face. And that was a bit of a struggle, to be fair. Uh, I wasn't doing very well. Uh, and then I just thought, uh, do you know, I'm, I'm just going to uh, put it into a stylized face, not completely anime. Uh, because anime, sort of, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's got that sort of very easy 2D style. That doesn't make sense, but I think you know what I mean. And then suddenly when you put it into 3D, it just doesn't look quite right. So stylized, it's stylized. It's close to anime in some ways, but uh, generally just stylized. 
I suppose there's lots of different types of anime, isn't there? Uh, generally really big eyes and uh, lots of screaming in <laughs> recent animes that I've looked at. Um, uh, if you know of any good animes for me to watch, uh, then uh, comment below and I'll take a look. Ideally, they need to be on Netflix uh, because I can't be bothered to look around for ages or, or spend any money. Uh, I'm quite tight, to be honest. Uh, so on Netflix, I do, I do spend money on Netflix. I have a Netflix account. So yeah, anyway, <laughs> slight aside there. Uh, so at this point, I thought, actually, that, that's looking okay now. I think I'm there. Uh, so I was quite pleased. I finally got there and I wasn't going to be really embarrassed at posting it, uh, which I was a bit concerned about. Uh, so the next bit was to pose. I did sort of a bit of touching up. That sounds weird, especially the point I'm at. Uh, a, a bit of sorting of the model uh, out there. There was no touching up going on here. Oh dear, I've done it again, haven't I? Uh, why do I get in innuendo mode suddenly uh, in these videos? Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's move on. I'm sure it's the Discord servers. They're, they're a bad example on me. Uh, they are quite humorous, but uh, a bad influence. <laughs> anyway, so just uh, smartening up the model slightly. Uh, and I was quite pleased with it at this point. Uh, but in the final render, you don't really see the details. So I probably went a bit too far, but maybe I can use this base mesh uh, later on, which might be quite nice. Uh, maybe the next one is actually staff. That's making me think I could just use this as my uh, character uh, and use, use it as a base mesh uh, and put the staff in their hand or something. Um, Anyway, uh, that's a slight aside. Uh, so yes, uh, on to Rigify. So I brought in uh, the, rig, uh, the Rigify rig, uh, deleted half of it. I don't, they, uh, there's probably an X mirror somewhere, maybe if anybody knows, uh, but I don't know where the X mirror is uh, in 2.8. So that's a bit of a pain. So I delete half the mesh and then I mirror it across the other side. And I have to mirror it, uh, mirror it uh, by scaling in the X axis minus one. That seems to be the only, way, the only way that's working for me at the moment. So if anybody knows anything about that, then uh, let me know. Uh, also, I have to you sort of have to scale around the um, cursor as well to get that right. Uh, this is quite good because I, I'm making the videos a bit longer, uh, so you can hopefully see what's going on a bit more, and I can explain a bit more what's going on, uh, and I'm finding it a bit easier to keep up with what's happening. Uh, so there's my uh, two characters, I just uh, duplicated them of course, I didn't want to make two separate characters. At first I was thinking of having a male and female, and the female sort of attacking for a change, uh, rather than uh, the man who's sort of dominant and the uh, female who's being submissive and defensive. I thought uh, I'd do it the other way around, but then uh, time got the better of me, and I thought no, nope, I'll just uh, have two females. Uh, anyway, so putting them into poses, I mean I could have used the whole Rigify proper rig, and that might have actually been better and easier to pose, but um, I might have had to mess around with the weights and it might, uh, it's just awkward to position all those bones uh, in place. Having, looking back at it and thinking about it, maybe that is a better option actually, because the Rigify rig, uh, when you sort of uh, m make the rig, it's really awesome. Uh, it's got loads of things going on, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, certainly for animation, uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called, it's, there's a button that sort of make uh, rig or something uh, and yeah it makes all the uh, IK and uh, um, sort of adjustment bones and things, yeah it's, it's just brilliant uh, so well worth it. Um, anyway yeah so uh, getting them into position I use this long cylinder to sort of uh, wear the um, splash, <laughs> splash I'm calling it, the liquid was going to be pointed and actually I think I used it later on anyway uh, as the actual liquid so um, but it was important to get the right angle to start off with rather than posing them without any sort of um, reference to where they are and then the second pose um, I did a couple of poses for the first one so I uh, keyframed them and just chose which was my favorite uh, for the first one that's sort of pointing downwards uh, but for this one I only did uh, well, I sort of changed it a bit around the place, but I probably could have done with a few more on this. But again, time was getting the better of me. Uh, so uh, I'm trying not to, sp I, ideally I'd spend two hours on each of them, but uh, I think it's a good thing uh, that I'm uh, pushing it. Uh, and because I've got this YouTube channel, uh, I feel like um, I owe it to my viewers, I owe it to you guys uh, to uh, put more effort in. Um, 
it sort of pushes me along, especially when you get nice comments and you, you've all been great. Thank you very much uh, for all the nice comments. Uh, it, it's helpful. Uh, it, well, it's, it's majorly helpful and it's massively encouraging. And that sort of spurs me on to put a bit more effort in, do something a bit more exciting. Um, I'm probably sort of bigging myself up now to do more than uh, two hours. But uh, two hours is uh, kind of the minimum in a sense. But that's what I'm aiming for. Uh, because I would like to get ahead of myself. Like I said, I've got a couple of jobs. They're filming jobs, funnily enough. Um, and they're coming up soon. And I need to be ahead of myself before they happen because they can be a bit of a pain and take a long time. I'm, I'm kind of getting out of the filming uh, stuff, really. And maybe I'll do some visual effects in the future. Then I can combine 3D with uh, film work. That'd be a bit of fun. Uh, so to do the sort of splash bit, I did a half a sphere, uh, put it into position and uh, eventually I booleaned that to that cylinder uh, and that's how I sort of made the, um, the liquid. Uh, but I also duplicated that because I wanted the uh, second female, the defensive female, to have a protective barrier. So I thought I'd copy that as well so that so the, um, the splash would be going over this protective barrier, which hopefully you can see. Um, I thought I'd uh, mess around with the different uh, met caps as well. I think that's a good idea uh, just to make sure that uh, things uh, look right uh, with different met caps. It's surprising sometimes you uh, come out of sculpt mode and you think, well, where's my mesh? What's happened to my mesh? Because it just looked a certain way in your, uh, the met cap you, you were using. Uh, so yeah, setting up the uh, scene here and just making sure I'm happy with how it's going and I'm going to start sculpting uh, the splashes. Um, this is quite fun and I probably should have spent more time on this aspect uh, than the, the uh, figures uh, but uh, that, that's kind of what I want to practice more um, and I, I got it to where I wanted it to be I suppose uh, so I'm not too disappointed or anything. Uh, and careful attention to my reference images I was uh, creating this sort of splash effect and uh, thank you for those people again who pointed out the, the rake option. I didn't actually need to use it on this particular one, uh, but uh, it did remind me of that and I think, oh, uh, why have I never noticed that before? And also uh, front face only. I always thought that was uh, on there by default and it was always kind of using front faces, but that's not the case. Uh, so thank you to those people who uh, reminded me about or told me that you should be using uh, front faces only. Uh, and then you won't be pulling around the back of your mesh as well. I'm not, not sh it's a weird one that because uh, when you're using the snake hook tool it's really difficult to do it without front faces only with yes uh, it's really difficult to do it with front faces only selected because it's not pulling the faces behind it. it's odd uh, so sort of getting used to that one but front faces only if your the back of your mesh is being distorted uh, thank you for that again lots of great advice I'm getting uh, from different people uh, thank you very much uh, uh, maybe people can uh, point out what I'm doing wrong uh, in Eevee at some point. I'm trying to think what the problem is I was having today. Uh, but yes, uh, transparency was my uh, problem today. Can't remember if I've already said that or not. But uh, I was uh, trying to, uh, because I like to have the background transparent. I've already said this, haven't I? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure now. Um, so that uh, I can sort of put it on my rotation thing. And uh, th that's not going to work with Bloom. Uh, without doing compositing and things. I feel like I definitely said that. I'm obviously getting tired and a bit crazy uh, from all the sculpting. I thought metaballs would be good for sort of the blobby bits, but actually they ended up looking a bit rubbish, so I just used a couple and thought, no, I won't use many of those. And instead, I'll just use a cylinder for some rays and uh, just sculpt those a bit, and hopefully that will work, which I think it worked okay. Uh, it, it probably could have done with a bit more work, to be fair, but um, it was okay. Uh, I'm sort of relatively pleased with that. I have had a couple of questions actually. Uh, one was, uh, do you need to be good at drawing, uh, drawing, uh, in order to be good at sculpting? And uh, it's quite a good question because I, I don't really know because I can only go from my own experience. And uh, my own experience says, and from what I've seen, is that those people who are good at art tend to apply themselves to sculpting really well. Uh, so it seems to be a big advantage. Uh, but I have seen sculptors uh, and heard of people 
who uh, sculpt and are not particularly good at 2D work. Uh, so, have I seen that many? Maybe not actually. Uh, my students tend to not go on into sculpting that much, and actually it's more the arty people that do. And maybe just people that are saying, yeah, in fact it's just a couple of comments I've had of people saying, uh, I'm good at sculpting but rubbish at 2D so uh, apparently there are people out there but I, when I say I've seen them I haven't actually seen their work so I don't know they might just be saying that uh, but I, I, I myself I would say I'm better at sculpting than 2D art um, but I feel like I need to improve my 2D art in order to um, help my sculpting along uh, so I don't know whether that answers your question and it's it's very difficult to say uh, because everybody has their own sort of experiences but like I say those people who are good at uh, 2D seem to be able to apply themselves really quickly to uh, the sort of 3D uh, sculpting uh, so it's obviously going to be advantageous uh, but not necessarily a necessity uh, try saying that quickly okay so um, I went back to uh, the um, females once they've been uh, posed they get all these distortions because I didn't bother doing the weights properly uh, that would have taken too long um, so uh, you go back in and you sort of sort out all the bits <laughs> uh, around the place and it was quite distorted actually the the rig hadn't done uh, the weights hadn't done a great job obviously because it was sort of automatic weighting uh, so not expecting it to uh, so there's a fair bit of tidying up to do um, but it was uh, again it was quite enjoyable this bit uh, thinking about uh, the pose and how the body would distort in different ways so um, it was well worth for my own sort of anatomical understanding uh, to do that again and go over the meshes again uh, so yes the second female uh, doing the same thing here and just going over uh, it's, it's quite tricky in a, in a sense uh, because at this point I didn't have any reference images for that particular pose, I'd set the pose up myself. So it becomes harder and then you do have to rely on your own knowledge of anatomy, um, which uh, is okay, but um, someone needs to send me one of these uh, uh, female anatomy figures to help me. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, uh, that aside, uh, what else? Oh, some people have asked, been asking if I would do a live sculpt, so um, sort of a Twitch feed or, well you can do it on YouTube now I think, can't you? Uh, sort of YouTube live or whatever it is. Uh, it's something I'm not particularly keen on because I tend to take quite a lot of breaks. So I sculpt for about half an hour uh, to an hour, but I often have, um, yeah, so about half an hour I'll have a break or um, after an hour. Sometimes even I'll just fit it in and do 10 minutes and then go and do whatever job I need to do. Uh, so um, it's a bit awkward for me to uh, do a live sculpt. Uh, but it's not, I'm certainly not ruling it out. It might be quite fun to do something like that and I can actually answer questions properly then. Um, but uh, for the moment, no, uh, is the answer, but not ruling it out. Uh, someone else was asking actually, uh, can I uh, make a sculpting course uh, for sale? Uh, and generally I'm, I'm trying to keep all my stuff for free. Uh, even the courses that I produce, uh, I'm trying to uh, keep uh, free. Um, I think it's just something I feel like I owe to the community because uh, all the stuff that I've learned is uh, from free tutorials generally speaking. It does take a bit longer because you have to sort of sift through those tutorials and find, uh, you don't often get courses as such because most people charge for those. Uh, so it does take a little while uh, to, to get your skills up. So I can understand why people want paid content, um, but I'm trying to keep it free and just work through the from the advertising rev revenue that I get from the channel so uh, make sure you're all clicking on all the adverts and watching them all the way through in fact I don't think I'm allowed to say that so I didn't say that I'm not going to re-record this so I'll just pretend I didn't say it <laughs> but click on all the adverts anyway uh, moving on from that uh, having some fun with um, Evie here but like I said the transparency was an issue uh, because um, I'm gonna say it for the third time now aren't I? <clears throat> excuse me uh, so uh, yeah transparency was an issue and I kept getting uh, other glitches as well um, there was uh, sort of pixelation 
which I couldn't understand, and I'm thinking, which setting? Uh, there's, you can increase the samples, but it wasn't seem to seemingly making any difference. Uh, so it's just a bit, bit frustrating, but again, you change a couple of things, and then you learn, and you change a couple of things again. Uh, what I forgot was that uh, Eevee doesn't really count your emissions as emissions. Uh, the bloom helps, it sort of makes them look like lights, but they're not actually giving off any lights, so uh, the uh, liquid itself looked a bit weird. And I wanted it to be watery at first, um, but actually I thought it's not making sense because the protective shield that the uh, second woman, the female, is uh, putting up is, um, it is uh, supposed to be bright. Uh, so it wasn't showing through the water, so I thought I'd just make it sort of black, uh, oily liquid instead. Uh, eventually I get to there, and I don't actually show that bit in the end because um, uh, it, it gets boring me just fiddling around for ages and ages. Um, yes, I think that makes sense. Uh, I've, yeah, I think I've said everything out of the questions there. Um, probably not much more of this. Watch out for camera clipping. Yeah, there we go, I think uh, I'm testing the renders. And the render looked different from the viewport. Why does it do that? I don't understand uh, why renders sometimes look different uh, than they do in the viewport. You'd think the viewport would look worse and the render would look better, but it uh, often the case that it, uh, the render actually uh, looked uh, slightly worse. And I'm thinking, what, what was it? What, what happened there? Oh, I did record quite a lot of this, really. Uh, there's me just sort of messing around, uh, trying out some uh, emissions again, bloom and all this sort of thing. Uh, it's quite fun when you get into Eevee and you think, oh, that looks nice, oh, that looks nice. And it's a uh, uh, kid in a sweet shop, kid in a playground, in fact, which I've been referred to uh, before, um, which is, uh, which I, I definitely am, definitely am. Oh, and then we're on to the Discord server. Yes, uh, so uh, well done. Uh, there's only a few here because I'm sort of uh, not caught up, so I've only... There's only a few between the last video that I did, uh, but nice one for Rage there. Uh, sort of uh, nice on the front there, a uh, bit of work on the back leg still to do there perhaps. Uh, Mr. M here with a beard, uh, nice work again. Uh, lots of people sort of doing uh, similar things to, to what I did actually. Uh, not that I've, not that I copied me, it's just the obvious idea. Uh, yep, so some nice work there. Uh, so there we go, uh, there's the finished result. Uh, hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it and uh, thanks for all the support again and I will see you next time